This video is called Lawmaking, and in this video we're going to learn about a little bit about Congress, and you already know some about Congress and how Congress was set up, but we're more specifically going to learn about how laws are made by Congress, which is Congress's main job. So let's begin here, and we'll start with just a little brief review on the way Congress is set up, just in case you forgot from our last unit. You might remember that Congress is divided into two groups. We have the Senate in one half of Congress, and the other part of Congress is called the House of Representatives. There are two groups because of the Great Compromise or the Connecticut Compromise that happened at the Constitutional Convention. The Senate is based on equal representation um, to appease the small states. There are two senators per state, so today we have 100 senators. And then the House of Representatives, it's based on proportional representation, so the larger states have more people. Um, this is based off of the Virginia Plan at the Constitutional Convention to make the large states happy. So in the House of Representatives, there are 435 members and the number of people in from each state in the House of Representatives is based on population. California has the most. States like Wyoming, Alaska, and Montana that are have low populations have very few people in the House of Representatives. Okay, so now that we know the way Congress is set up in those two groups called the Senate and the House, let's talk about what they do. And Congress's main job is to make laws. When we studied federalism in our previous topic, you started to see some of the powers that Congress had. Now we need to figure out how Congress can use those powers. So to make a law, there is actually a rather lengthy process. And that process starts with step one. You need an idea before you can make a law. So let's talk a little bit about some vocab here. The word we want to talk about is bill. This is the name of an idea for a law. So when we're talking about a law that hasn't been approved yet, we refer to it as a bill. Bills get numbers when they go to Congress, so every bill has its own number. And until a law is officially passed by Congress, it's not a law, it's called a bill. So all bills start as an idea. It usually comes from a need. So let's think for an ex a second, a big thing going in on the news right now is the fact that people are texting while driving and there's accidents happening. So they made a law making texting while driving illegal. At least that was done in the state of Connecticut. So a need happens and then they make a law to stop it. So that's sort of a way you can get ideas. But ideas can come from the people. It can come from people in Congress. It can come from the president. Really anyone can suggest ideas to Congress. So the president does that a lot. You heard the president talking in his debates and his campaigns and talking about how he wants Congress to do these certain things. He's giving them ideas for laws. An idea is written into a bill format by somebody in Congress. So whoever has the idea, they bring it to Congress. Congress says, hey, that is a pretty good idea. Let me write it into a bill. And then they, they write it up into the correct format, which we'll study in class. And then that starts the process of lawmaking. So you have your idea. It's written into a bill. The next step is it goes to a committee. Both the Senate and the House of Representatives are divided into small groups called committees. And these small groups each have a specific topic. Um, for example, there is a committee on agriculture. There is a committee on finance. So anything to do with farming and the laws to do with farming and agriculture and food production would go to the committee on agriculture. Anything to do with money would go to the committee on finance. So if you're a member of those committees, usually you can focus on being a special, like a specialist on that one topic. The benefit of a committee, um, you can imagine in the House of Representatives there's 435 people. Imagine if all 435 people had to talk about every single detail of every single bill. It would take forever. These are smaller groups that are going to work on the bill before it's presented to the whole group. So the committees take the bill. They debate it. They modify it a little bit. And they have to decide, is the committee going to approve this bill or not? Uh, many bills die on this step. Either the committee doesn't get to it or the committee decides it's not a very good idea or not an idea for right now. So I would say of all the steps, this is where most bills die. They don't even get to the next step. It's an idea, it goes to committee, and it goes that far. It's the end of the road for that bill. But if a committee likes the bill and they approve it, it goes to step three, which is the whole group. This is where it gets confusing because remember, there is two parts of Congress, the Senate and the House, and this is the same step for either. So if a bill is approved by the committee, it goes to the whole group. That can be either the House or the Senate, depending on which side it starts with. It doesn't matter which side starts a bill. It can start in the Senate and go to the House. It can start in the House and then go to the Senate. The only exception is financial laws, which have to start in the House. Other than that, anything can start on either side. 
the bill is debated within the whole group. So let's say we have that bill on texting. It was someone's idea. It would have gone to like the public safety committee. They would have talked about it. If they like it, they then bring it to the whole group. And if the whole group likes it, it goes to the other side. So it starts in committee, then it goes to the whole group. Let's say, for example, it's the House of Representatives. If the entire House of Representatives votes it in by a majority vote, it would then go to the Senate for the same process. It would have to go to the whole group and go through a majority vote in the Senate as well. If a bill doesn't pass, it goes back to committee for more work, but that doesn't really happen often. If it doesn't pass the whole group, it's probably dead. So now we have our idea. It got approved by the committee. It got approved by both the Senate and the House. Then it would go on to step five, which is the El Presidente. The president is in this step. He is not able to make laws, but he does have some say on the final law. If a bill makes it out of committee, then passes both the House and the Senate, it goes to the president for approval. There are a couple things the president can do that I'm not going to mention in this video because we don't want to get into that now, but he pretty much has two choices. He can sign the bill or he can veto the bill. If the president signs the bill, it becomes a law. People now have to follow it. It is written in law. That's all set. The process is over. The president can also veto the bill, which means the president does not approve it, and then the bill goes back to Congress. At this point, it's likely dead. If the president vetoes it, it usually does not have any chance of becoming a law. There is one exception, however. The Congress can override the president. If the president vetoes it, the Congress can make it a law still, but it's very unusual and it doesn't happen often. Congress can override the president's veto if two-thirds of both the Senate and the House approve the bill. Then it would become a law without the president's approval. Congress can also fix the bill and re-vote it through and hope the president likes it the second time, but neither one of these scenarios is very likely. Okay, so that's how a bill, that's how laws are made. It starts with an idea, then it goes to the appropriate committee in either the House or the Senate, if the committee approves the bill, it goes to the whole group, either the House or the Senate. If approved by the whole group, it goes to the other side. So depending on where it starts, that would mean which one is three and which one is four. Then if both the House and Senate approve the bill, it goes to the president. He can sign it and it becomes a law or he can veto it. And that means it's probably dead. But there's one last hope for that bill. If the president uses his veto, the bill goes back to Congress. Congress can fix it and revote it through or they can override the president if two-thirds of both the Senate and the House approve. It would then be a law without the president's signature, but that does not happen very often. That is lawmaking in eight minutes. So we're going to work on this more in class over the next few days, and you guys are actually going to make your own laws and pass them through the system.